James Patston traded to the New York Yankees. Could Noah Syndergaard be headed to the San Diego Padres? I'm Dawson Wright, joined by Noah Wright, and this is the November 21st edition of Barreled Up. I said, who? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, I said I was born ready. I said I was born ready. On team living good, yeah, I don't know. I've been ready, born ready. Yeah. I said I was born ready. On team living good, yeah, I don't know. I stay steady, born ready. I said I was born, I was born ready. I said I was born, I was born ready. Thank you everyone for joining us. And before we get started, I just wanted to say that there is only going to be one episode this week because of Thanksgiving, so we decide to bring it to you on Wednesday, but next week we will be back to the normal schedule of Monday and Friday. But first, we have a little bit of banter. Steve Pierce, he signs with the Red Sox. He is back in a Red Sox uniform. Noah, what do you think of Steve Pierce going back to the Red Sox? I think I think for the deal that they got on that was it I'm pretty sure it was one year six point five six point two five million dollars. That's a pretty good deal for the uh, World Series MVP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know he did really good after the trade to the Red Sox when he went from Toronto to Boston, and he did pretty good there. So you bring you bring a really good righty bat, and he can platoon with Mitch Moreland over at first base. Mm-hmm. Yep, I I think it's a really good signing for them too. You know six point two five. That's not very pricey. I'm sure Steve Pierce is happy to stay with the Red Sox after what he contributed in the last World Series. And yeah. also, we had Kurt Suzuki, who went back to the Washington Nationals. And I, before I heard this news, I actually thought Kurt Suzuki retired. Because, <laughs> I mean, he's a lot older than he looks, but hes I've been taking a look at him for a little bit, and he's been doing... He's been doing pretty solid. So yeah, uh, how do you like this pickup for the Nationals? I don't, I don't, I was, I wasn't predicting the Nationals to sign Suzuki, but it does make sense for them too. Mm-hmm. They're losing Matt Weeders, and catcher's been kind of a problem for them for the last few years since they didn't sign Wilson Ramos and he left to the Rays in free agency. So signing him, he's a solid catcher. He's not that bad defensively. Or he wasn't so great defensively this year, but he's not known to be bad defensively. He's a solid bad two seventy average. Mm-hmm. You know. 10, 12 home runs. It's not, it's not bad signing. And we've heard some rumors about JT Real Muto, and now we know that's not happening because probably... Well, at least we're not, not for the Nationals. Yeah, probably because of the Marlins' super high asking price. So I like this signing. Um, he's probably one of the best catchers available on the market, if not the yeah, best catcher for free agency. Ramos and Grandal. Yeah, so I think this is a great trade, at, or great signing for the Nationals, and um, two years, I mean, you know, I guess, but it's only $5 million a year, so, you know, yeah, that, so that's not that not much. Not much of a risk. Yeah. And also, we had, speaking of free agency, we had Manny Machado, who... Make another, make a statement. <laughs> yeah, Manny Machado... A damage control statement. Yeah, basically. He made a statement saying how um, he'll, he will do anything to help his team win. That's what he said. And a lot of people were quick to call it damage control because that's exactly after his Charlie Hustle comments. Yeah, because that's exactly or what Johnny it was. Hustle. Yeah, yeah. After the whole Johnny Hustle thing, you know that he didn't look like the most attractive free agent to yeah. pick up, especially after that. You know, a lot of teams were like, "Whoa!" And you know, he he says this. We all know he kind of doesn't really mean it. It's really just to try and make sure that. He still gets paid. He's <laughs> yeah. still going to get $300 million, or at least close to it. Probably going to get over it. So, I mean, you know, this statement, it, it's, it means nothing. You know, a lot of baseball executives, yeah. they'll just see right through it anyway. Because, you know, us and other baseball writers, we could just see through it pretty clearly. That's just a, him just saying it because he has to say it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's basically what it was. So, it's it's like it's it's similar to like when a player uses steroids and mm. it's always the same thing. It's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, mean I didn't to do this. Mean I didn't to know." Do something like, like that. Yes, you did. It's, it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like a it's like a Mad Lib. It's like a Mad Lib but for but different names and stuff. Yeah. So, we all know Manny Machado didn't mean it and I don't think it really had an effect on anything. It's not like he apologized or something, but I don't know. Even if he did, people would still see right through it and see what he's been doing on the field. But 
the most important news of the day. <laughs> well, we think it is. For those of you who listen to the podcast, you know that Noah and I, um, we have a strange... I don't know. I want. I want to say obsession, but I don't. I don't know if that's the correct word. Yeah. Um, of this pitcher in the Astros organization that goes by the name of Rogelio Armenteros. We think he's great, super underrated. He puts up really good numbers. He's in AAA, and him and Garrett Stubbs, who we talked about last episode, have been added to the forty-man roster for the Houston Astros. So yeah, that prote- that protects them from the Rule Five draft. Yep, that's basically why the move was made, which is great. Um, I'm I'm really excited for Rogelio. I think he has a chance of making the major league roster this year out of spring training. Yeah. Um, with some injuries and stuff, maybe coming as a bullpen piece, long ter- just mm-hmm, long relief, mm-hmm. and then eventually go into starter and then become the one because he's you know Rahelio Armenteros. <laughs> but um, so yeah, good for Rahelio, and let's go ahead and get into a little bit of what we like to call the Coors effect. So Noah, I'm going to let you take it away and explain what the Coors effect is. <laughs> The Coors, the Coors effect, it just applies to Colorado, the Colorado Rockies field, Coors field, and mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's because they have the highest altitude, sea level altitude of any MLB park, and they've even tried to counter this by using a room-sized humidor to with the baseballs to try and reduce that effect, but it's pretty clear it still helps a lot of batters. Most batters, a lot of batters... Most of them do much better inside cores than outside cores. That's pretty evident through stats mm-hmm. and even just sci- the scientific way that the ball moves. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, you know, um, looking at things like home and away splits for these players can affect guys like Nolan Arenado, who is on the last year of his contract. And, you know, Nolan Arenado, he is really good. We're not saying that he isn't good. He's great. A really good defender, but do you think teams could use the Coors effect to their advantage, especially for a guy on Nolan Arenado saying, hey, you know, in Colorado, you know, you hit really well, you know, away, you know, your numbers took a dip, so, you know, we're going to pay you based off what those numbers were. I think team. I think obviously a team would take that into consideration since Coors Field is very unique. It's not like a lot of other fields, mm-hmm. but... I think eventually Nolan would eventually Nolan players like that would adjust to their new surroundings, but I still think that it would be something I would think about first before giving Arenado a contract. Mm-hmm. And like just looking at Arenado's BABIP from home and away, it's almost it's like eighty points higher at home than away, which you know is probably because of a lot of course. Yeah, his, his OPS drops from uh over his OPS drops from almost 1000 down to a little under 800. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> um that might hurt his value a little bit and could possibly get him to re-sign with the Rockies because Yeah, the the Rockies could use that to their advantage like mm-hmm. say, "Hey, you're not so good a lot of other places, but you're really good here." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, that might have been something that they did with Blackman because yeah. we know he was a free agent going into this season and then he re-signed you know that I, I think it was six years or something I wasn't sure I'm, uh, I don't, it, I forget, it's a, not it's sure. a long extension but um, you know you, you unless you know Blackman he's a lot like Arenado with his home and away splits yeah they're pretty similar so Colorado may use this to keep Arenado possibly maybe and um you know, they're still really good players when they aren't at, you know, cores, but yeah. they're just a lot better when, when they are at cores. In cores. Course. Yeah. So that could be something that the Rockies use to maybe keep their team together a little bit more because... Yeah, a little bit and not have to spend as much money mm-hmm. as another team, you know? Mm-hmm. Because we don't know um, how long Colorado's going to try and keep this thing going. I mean, you know... They had a pretty good run. They had a pretty good run in the... um, Well, they beat the Cubs in the wildcard game, but um, I don't know how long they're going to be able to stick everything together. Yeah, their pitching is still really solid. They have have a lot of young players coming up through the minors, Mm -hmm. and it's really going to depend on how they're going to do, how they're going to spend their money over the next few Mm off-seasons. Yeah, because... 
DJ LeMay, he's a free agent. Colorado, they do have a little bit of money to spend. It's not like, you know, they're the A's or anything, but they still aren't quite, you know... They aren't like Yankee level yeah, or Red Sox or, or anything yeah, like or that. Yeah, or Boston or San Francisco, L.A. They aren't, they aren't on that level. We know the Giants are rebuilding. It's looking like the Diamondbacks are going to be re- rebuilding, which we'll get into Here, a little bit maybe. later. And... Um, Padres could be going for it, which we are going to get into after we discuss the James Patson deal, which was going to be which is going to be right after the break. All right, we are back and we are going to be discussing the big news from yesterday, which is James Patson heading to the New York Yankees, which is a really big step up in their rotation. Noah, did you like this trade on the Yankees side? For the Yankees, I thought it was an okay trade. Paxton isn't an ace. Le- he hasn't really been a consistent ace level pitcher. He's mm-hmm. shown the ability to, like last year when he had like a 297, 298 ERA, somewhere around that. But he's never stayed consistently healthy. He's not a bad pitcher at all, and I, I would easily, I would like him too. Mm-hmm. But it's they gave up some pretty big pieces mm-hmm. for him. Yeah, and I've seen a lot. You know, a lot of people on the Yankees side. They've been talking about Sheffield for a while. You know, saying like oh, he's going to be the next great Yankee pitcher and all this stuff, right? And then... Yeah, Sheffield's pretty... Sheffield, he came up last year, didn't do so great, but he has some really good minor league numbers. And then if we look at the other prospects they got, they got some pretty underrated prospects from out of Paxton. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I am i didn't think they would get that much in return for Paxton for whatever team he went to. I knew they were trying to get Whitley from the Astros, which the Astros were like, uh, no... <laughs> they're like that's not happening but um i think this trade is good for the mariners i think it's really good for the mariners it yeah it makes a lot of sense you know with their current core i don't think they would have been able to no i, I mean th- i guess you know they could be like oh well they could have made the playoffs but i mean i get they haven't been to the playoffs in like 20 years right but <laughs> Also, you don't go to the playoffs just to go to the playoffs. You at least want to go to the, you know, at least try and compete for a World Series, especially if you're going yeah. back. And that wasn't going to happen, especially after they missed out on Shohei Otani last year. Yeah, but the prospects they got, it looked like a pretty good move for Seattle mm-hmm. because Dom Thompson Williams, I feel like he had over 900 OPS down in the minors last year. He was a 2020 guy. He's. I've heard that he's not bad defensively. They, I forget who the other guy was. Um, Eric Swanson. I looked at his numbers. He's a he's 25, so he's not really a young prospect, but or he's getting close to 26. But you know, not young, but he's still pretty good. He had some pretty good. Mi- mi- he had some pretty good numbers in the minors last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know where this leaves the Yankees for the rest of their starting rotation. We know they signed CeCe Sabathia earlier in the offseason, but... It's, they have a pretty good three with uh, mm-hmm. Severino, now Paxton, Tanaka. Mm-hmm. I, you, there's a pretty good chance that they still sign uh, Patrick Corbin. Mm-hmm. Well, is Patrick Corbin the move? I don't... I don't know. I don't think he's been that consistent. He hasn't been that consistent, but it would... He had a pretty good year last year. Yeah, last year. So you know, that means that his agent—it's a risk. It's a risk. His but agent's going to be like, "Oh, look at his numbers last year. Them. Pay us, pay us like that." You know, like he, like you know, he put up those numbers last year. It depends. It depends what the deal he gets, whether or not it's a good signing or not. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, I think that a better fit for them would be Hap. If Hap wants to come back, maybe you saw how good he did in New York. He, yeah. he was incredible. I thought he should have started the wild card game, but a lot like uh, when he went to the Pirates a few years ago in the at the deadline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he did incredible, and you know it it sounds like the only teams going after him right now are the Blue Jays and the Yankees. From yeah, what we've heard so far, so could we see Hat back in New York? Do you think maybe I maybe I the pet, I think I I don't think he's going to be expensive, but. You know, nah. that'd be a decent number four star that you could slot in. Mm-hmm. I he'd be a great four, it's, especially with the if with the numbers he's put up in New York. And yeah, then uh, uh, having Sabathia as your number five. I know he's getting older, but the deal they signed him to is not expensive mm-hmm. whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It's not very much of a risk. You put him in the five spot. Jordan Montgomery will eventually come back, probably nearing the end of this year after having Tommy John surgery. 
fairly early on last year. So you got some. So you got some. You got a solid five if you sign Hap, and then eventually Jordan McGun- Montgomery will work his way back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think for um, the Yankees, this is. I think it's a solid move. I mean, we don't know. You know, Yankee fans are just hoping that Paxton doesn't turn out like another Sonny Gray, but. I don't think yeah. Pat Patston's not that type of guy. I don't think no. so. I feel like they should be okay a little bit. And the Mariners have been in some other trade talks as well, which is trading Gene Segura and who else was it? Leak, Leak, Mike Leak. Yeah. yeah, Gene Segura and Leak for Will Myers, which that's. I think that's a horrible trade. I mean, it saves the Mariners some money, but mm-hmm. is it really you? I think they could get a decent if they package. I was thinking of like something similar. I was going to write an article on it, uh, packaging Segura and Colome to the Braves for one of their. You know, they have so many good pitching prospects. Maybe get a few of those out of them for a package mm-hmm. like that. But if you're going to trade him to the Padres for. Will Myers, who's never really been that great throughout his career, and he's on a pretty bad contract. Looking at mm-hmm. it's it's confusing. Like, why do this? Yeah. And the Mariners are. And if you ask me, the Mariners have a reputation of doing this. Like, if you remember a few years ago when they made all sorts of trades, I know they traded they traded for Malik Smith back in the 2015 2016 offseason, only to flip him to the Rays to for um, Drew Smiley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they so I I've kind of just seen them do this before and I don't think it's a good idea. Yeah, I I don't see where this fits for them anywhere. No, they need they need <laughs> to build up the farm system right now and that... Segura would bring in some things that would really help that. Mm-hmm. Unless ownership thinks this is a good deal because they think Will Myers is a star. I mean, he's kind of ever since he left okay. Tampa Bay, he's just kind of been uh He's gotten like kind you didn't even he had it's not like he was even that great when he left Tampa Bay. He had that really good rookie season back in 2013. Didn't mm-hmm. do so great in 2014, 2015. On and off injured. Then he got traded. I think he was the first year with the Padres was 2015. Mm-hmm. Again, on and off injured. Not so great when he was healthy. 2016 he had a really good start to the season throughout the first half of the season. Then kind of fell off, and he hasn't really been the same player since. Mm-hmm. I think they could get something. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they could get at least something out of Segura. Yeah, I feel like they could get like a top prospect, top pitching prospect. Maybe they could package him, like I said, with Colome, mm. get something decent out. I mean, I don't know about top pitching prospect, but at least at least like two mid levels. I think you don't think he would be worth at least like one no higher end pitching prospect. Mm-mm. Not like not like um. You know, I'm not saying that they're gonna get oh they're gonna get Ian Anderson or someone out or Kyle Wright out of them, but I was thinking like maybe mid like kind of on the higher end like Bryce Wilson who's ranked top 100 something like that. Mm, he's like maybe. in the I think he's in the 80s and stuff. Yeah, maybe 80s. I I could see that possibly. Um, it just depends. Are the Mariners eating a little bit of his contract or if he's not? He's actually not getting paid that much. I think he's getting paid like. 14 million, 14.5 million, somewhere between that. Yeah, I mean, so it's he's not actually terrible, not, but yeah, he's not getting paid too much. And if you looked at it, his weight runs carrying plus was at 111 last year. That was eighth among all shortstops. And he had some mm-hmm. pretty good defense at shortstop, too. So, yeah, I mean, he's not that it's not a bad contract, it's fairly team friendly. Mm-hmm. And if you know, if the um, Phillies don't get Machado, Phillies might be a fit, maybe. Billy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that'll be interesting. But when we come back from break, we will be talking about Goldschmidt possibly going to the Twins and Cindergard possibly being traded away from the New York Mets. Stay tuned. All right, we are back, and there has been a few thoughts about the San Diego Padres making another trade to try and get Noah Cindergard. From the Mets, do you think this would be a good move from the Padres? I th- I don't think they're ready to compete yet, but Syndergaard has a few years in control left, so I think by twenty twenty, the Met- the Padres should be ready to compete, mm-hmm. whether that's for a wild card spot or even for the division, depending on how the division's going. Because like we said earlier, we're not really sure if the we'll, what we'll talk about later with the Diamondbacks going rebuilding. Mm-hmm. And the, we talked about earlier a little bit about Colorado. 
So they could compete for a spot in the playoffs in the next year or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, Syndergaard would cost them some of their young pitching prospects, but or or some or I feel like the Mets would ask for I think Francisco Mejia from the Padres since they don't really have a solution at catcher right now. Mm-hmm. Right now, their best option is Travis Darno, and that's not really too great. So I think it's not. I think if they try to get like a pitching prospect and Mejia out of Syndergaard, that'd be pretty. Uh, that'd be a pretty decent return on him. Yeah, I, yeah, I could see that. But, but um, so Syndergaard is arbitration two eligible this year, and he will be a free agent in 2022. So, um, the Padres get a little bit of control. Um, we know they have they've been saving up some money. So, um, yeah, I think that could be possible for them. Um, yeah, I, I think the Myers deal would be interesting for them. I, that would definitely be good for the Padres. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's just, is it money saving? Is this the whole purpose of the deal? Because the, for the, it would mainly be the reason the Mariners would make that trade. Mm-hmm. Padres it would be to acquire two players that with control. One being a shortstop that has a pretty good, that has a decent bat and decent glove and a back end starter who's not, who's I think like part of his contract is even being paid by the Cardinals right now. Mm-hmm. I mean. I don't know. It's might leak. He's not. He's not great. He's a back end starter, but I mean, half of his contract is getting paid by the Cardinals. So I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess that's not too bad. But Segura. I mean, uh, I don't. I'm not. I'm not Segura's too been sure pretty that. consistent the last few years. Yeah, he's been he's been consistent. That's true. But this this is like was, his third year. He was an all star like this year, wasn't he? Yeah, he's an all star this year. Hmm. Well. That should be interesting, but you know if he he plays in a fairly you know pitcher friendly park, so maybe a move to a mm-hmm. more hitter friendly place will help him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and something uh, is getting really interesting is the Arizona Diamondbacks, who have been in talks of selling because they made some pretty terrible moves, including Granky's contract, which is bad, and probably it's it's, it's not bad, but it's not great. It, I mean, it's too long. It's too long. Yeah, but is would you really consider years? a bad... Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad would you say it is with 10 being the worst? Probably like a 6. I'd put it at a 5 or 6. It's not bad, but it's not horrible. It could, but it it's could not be like, better. It's not Albert Pujols. <laughs> well, level. There, there is the worst contract of all, which is Yosmani Tomas. That is, yeah, that's that's a pretty bad contract. <laughs> that, that's a, oh, man, that's, that's terrible. So, um... It looks like the Diamondbacks could be rebuilding with the yeah. Padres on their way up, which means Gold, which also relates to Goldschmidt only having one year left on his deal. So there have been some talks. There have been some trade talks for Paul Goldschmidt. One of the teams that kind of surprised me was the Minnesota Twins. And yeah, that doesn't really strike me as a team that would be looking to compete right now and acquire mm-hmm. Goldschmidt. I mean. It is the N- it is the AL Central, so you know you just really got to beat out the. Maybe, maybe he maybe he'd actually help them. Maybe that will. It's like how we always say like one player can't carry a team, but in the AL Central, it's, I would be interested to see what would happen. <laughs> it's like putting Chad in the AL Central and put him on like the Royals <laughs> and just see what happens. See if he can carry them to the top. But um, yeah, I don't understand why the Twins would be talking. I mean, it, it is yeah. just talk. It's nothing final yet. And, but the Twins don't really make sense. But another team that has been talking about possibility of getting Goldschmidt, and we've also heard maybe a possibility of the package deal with Goldschmidt and Granke, is the Houston Astros, who have the prospects to do it. Um, but do you think this would be a good move for the Astros if they got Granke and Goldschmidt? I think it depends how much money the Diamondbacks eat from that contract because you know the Diamondbacks are going to have to eat some money from that contract, you know? Mm -hmm. But it depends on how much money they eat from that contract and what prospects they give up because I don't think that Granke or Goldschmidt alone is going to bring back like Forrest Whitley or somebody or Kyle Tucker. He's on the last year of his deal. He's a really good player, but last year of his deal, they're not going to give up a player that could be his future superstar Mm -hmm. for one year of his current superstar. And... Granky, he does have control left, and he's still pitching like an ace, but 
that contract could be a uh, big liability mm-hmm. in the next year or two. If they get Goldschmidt and Granky, I could see Tucker going. I I think really yes. Um, from uh, maybe Tucker if they get Granky too. Mm-hmm. From what I've seen with Tucker playing in AAA, I saw him play for basically an entire season. Um, you know, he he went out to the bids. His swing didn't look like it did in AAA. It could have been something, you know. And then he comes back down to AAA, and he's just on fire. Yeah, but it was only you know how long? Do you, it wasn't that long of a stint. You he know? was there for a few weeks, and he couldn't get a hit to save his life. It was. I'll check it if you want me it to. It was bad. No, it's okay. Um, but I think that I think that they could get Tucker. Um, they're holding on pretty tight to Forrest because they think Whitley's going to be really, really good, and I think he's going to be really, really good too. And you know that return, especially because the um, Astros are going to have to eat part of Granky's contract and Gold. And so are the Diamondbacks yeah. too. And Goldschmidt's only there for one year. Um, you could you could see you know maybe Armenteros going, you know like a Armenteros and yeah. Tucker, and maybe someone Armenteros, else. Armenteros, you don't think that maybe they could get by by throwing like Josh James and or like Sino mm-hmm. Perez. I don't think and... they want to throw Josh James after what he did in the postseason. I yeah. Josh James has a pretty high value right now. Um, you know after especially now because he throws gas, <laughs> he throws <laughs> a lot harder now than he used to. So. I think his value is a little too high, but so you really think the they would give up Tucker because of just a short stint in the majors? No, well, after I that? think to make this deal, I don't think they would, you know, be hurting too much after giving up Tucker. I because maybe outfield is a position that's you could fill it pretty easy, you know. It's but especially yeah. with some of the Astros prospects I've seen, guys like Drew Ferguson. Um, you know, they have Tony Kemp. I, it's not a demanding position for them. Not right now. Yeah. So, plus, I think after this Well, season, they do need a left fielder, but, you know, they have guys to fill yeah. that for now. I think after, after this season, the Astros are going to start to be on a serious sort of decline. Because... Really? Yes. And I'll, I'll explain why. Because, I mean, they have guys like... Like Forrest and and Stubbs and Triple A, um, unless those guys come up and become the Nets, you know, Correa Springer, you know, become the Nets stars, then yeah, I don't I don't see them being able to hold it hold it together. Yeah, it I I think it's really gonna be dependent on a few factors like a how the prospects are gonna do once they come up. Is Whitley going to be an ace? Is Tucker going to be a starting out level outfielder? And then also, you got to look at how they're going to be in free agency this year. Mm-hmm. You know, they are they're going to they're going to likely lose Dallas Keuchel in free agency. Charlie Morton's still up the air. He'd like to return, but you know, it's not for certain yet. Mm-hmm. There's then next year they lose Cole and Verlander at the same time. So there's a lot of questions going on. And if the prospects can't fill that void. Then there's going to be. Then I think it's time. Then they're just going to start going downhill. Yeah, and I mean the AL West. It isn't the strongest division. A's came out of nowhere, but who really knows if they could keep it up next year? I mean, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Probably not. Mariners are on the decline. Angels still suck because they can never stay healthy, and the Rangers are the Rangers. So there's not. <laughs> <laughs> there's not. I mean, I think they could hang on to that division, but. It's gonna t- kind of turn into the new AL Central for a little bit, possibly. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Astros are still really good, but if you're talking about contending for a title, um, New York and Boston are in the way, and Cleveland. And the door is yeah, closing. And Cleveland, depending on what they do, and they're gonna have yeah. to re-sign Bregman and Correa and Springer, and they they and then they already got out to about Cole and Verlander mm-hmm. is hitting free agency too, like I said earlier. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I think Cole and Verlander are gonna go. Um, Verlander, Verlander could retire. Yeah, I mean, still though, that's a pretty big piece you're losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Retire, yeah, resign but somewhere else. He could retire. I think he's either gonna retire, resign with or the like Astros, a one-year deal with the or resign with Detroit. Tigers. Yeah, 
I don't see him going anywhere else, really, other than Houston or Detroit or retiring. Because, yeah. um, and the reason I say retiring, I know he's not, you know, that old, but he... He's getting up there. Yeah, and he is a dad now, and he got a ring, so he's probably just like, eh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> nothing left to, Nothing left to prove. Yeah, and um, you think he's a Hall of Famer? I think... I'm pretty sure. I think he is. I don't know about first ballot, but he definitely eventually makes it. Yeah. So, um, I I think one last year in Detroit would be fun. You know, just a sort of farewell yeah. kind of thing because he's been around for a long time and he's been really good for a long time. That, that last year or two on that last year or two in Detroit would have been would be nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good to see. You know, and, and especially because Detroit loves him so much. But yeah. yeah. But this Astros team, they're gonna. They're going to start losing some pieces soon, and, you know, we don't know how they're going to handle that. It, it really depends on the prospects. Kyle yeah. Tucker is going to have to become the new George Springer if they want to George Springer, keep it together. yeah, they also need other players to perform better. Like, mm-hmm. I know Correa didn't have such a great year. He needs to bring him back up. He needs um, – Altuve needs to stay healthy, become the mm-hmm. 20, 30 guy he was a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, you know they need just players to step up, and I don't know how if they can or not. Well, I I saw uh, Altuve during an interview. He was saying how um, you know the, a lot of guys on the team weren't one hundred percent. You know, like in two thousand seventeen they were, in two thousand eighteen they weren't. And you know yeah. you obviously saw that you you know Altuve was limping. Just, there were some the injuries. Field. I know. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, he missed some time. I know Correa. I think mm-hmm. did he miss some time? I'm not sure. Correa, Correa you know, missed. Then, Correa missed a lot of time. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then uh, didn't, I think Springer had a few DL placements, mm-hmm. and they need they just need guys like that and Reddick and mm-hmm. you know just players like that in general that they're really relying mm-hmm. on to step it up and be good players again, like they were a few years ago. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do with the catcher position too. Um, McCann is who knows what's Free what's agent. happening with McCann. Um, I feel like he's gonna be like a one year deal with the with the um, Braves just as kind of like a farewell. I was about to say Braves too. as a platoon. I was thinking, I was thinking he has like yeah. their platoon catcher so, and just kind of as a last farewell to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that'd be fun. Um, I mean, you know, they do have Garrett Stubbs, which we know they added him to the forty man roster, so maybe they're yeah. finally taking him seriously. You know, he's not too small. He's great. And you know, unless unless they get real Muto, Stubbs might be the guy for them. They might get, they might, or like uh, Max Stasi is just very much of a defensive first catcher. Mm-hmm. They might try and get um, someone in free agency. You know, kind of like a Kurt Suzuki, or maybe trade for a guy. You know, that's kind of like that. Or resign McCann to a one year deal just in case Stubbs doesn't work out or hit yeah. very well. But. Um, it should be really interesting to see what happens yeah. with the Astros prospects. So um, that's going to wrap it up for today's show. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. And you could read a lot of Noah's stuff on the dugoutonline.com. There will be a link in the description to all of Noah's articles if you want to check those out. I said, and we will see you guys in the next episode. I don't know. I don't know. Listen, I said I was born ready.